Welcome to Trade the NBA. This is John's report is for the 1st of April. And yes, I got my hand free of the cast, but still extremely swollen. But rehab, it's one of those things, just like the market here, it's in its version of a back and forth rehab situation where a little bit of fade, but uh, predominantly there's just nothing with an impetus to drive things lower. You might think that the staggering debt, the interest becoming the largest expenditure, uh, you know, and a variety of other things from, you know, interesting situations with bridges now in the U.S. Uh, saw another video of a second barge hitting a uh, another bridge in a different state and uh, Interesting coincidence, perhaps, uh, that they're all happening shortly after the terrorist attack in Moscow. Also interesting. But uh, whether that escalation takes place or not, the question of dollar devaluation through inflation is real. Um, However, like I've said before, uh, just because that's happening doesn't mean that it's just the dollar. Uh, you have uh, depreciation of uh, similar assets, fiat currencies in other countries, so it relatively seems minor. But uh, when you look at commodities, that's where you begin to notice it, and that's why we always pay attention to those. From a NASDAQ standpoint, you can see it was much weaker, um, but held up uh, quite nicely with the support of the S&P and still uh, much softer from this standpoint, but you can see uh, shorts not getting much traction from it, so they're fading off here with that MBI white dip. Um, still not the greatest uh, setup, but you're hovering between 176, so it's not really the end of the world. And without some kind of catastrophic moment, uh, nothing really happening uh, that's going to drive things, and particularly with Treasuries assuming the rate cuts uh, with a softening economy, which is interesting with an inflationary environment, um, where are you going to put your money? There's nowhere to go other than alternative crypto commodities and either in the market. So that's pretty much where things are at. And oil peaking out at its uh, top end and potentially breaking into further. And the further that gets from that 60s range, uh, the harder it is going to be to, for the Fed to justify any kind of softening whatsoever. And any QE they do is going to have to be quiet uh, because you can't announce a rate cut with that kind of inflation. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And you can see the euro suffering under that uh, increase of spending. And this is what I talk about. You're going to see that throughout other currencies. So it becomes relative uh, to those that are not... Uh, overspending, which ironically uh, might fall into the lines of some of those countries the, from the eastern sector that uh, aren't quite doing the same things that uh, the U.S. is, though uh, some might argue that China's in a similar situation to the U.S. with its uh, economy and situation. Gold continuing to push to new highs, and it's going to continue to do so. No, no reason for that to abate. Uh, the same thing is going to happen with uh, crypto. Um, Again, people looking just for an alternative. Uh, the rate at which it increases is going to vary back and forth. You can see a little MBI weight lead, but with Magenta still over. Should be sufficient enough to hold it in place and keep it plugging along. Uh, when we look at ETH, uh, similar situation. Um, also in this sort of soft in-between period. Um, again, you know, this is that back and forth with uh, money flows into ETFs and, you know, that situation and how much of that's going to, you know, expand. Uh, literally, I think it's going to be a question of uh, what we see the Fed do and if the Fed has to or is forced to ease uh, within these conditions, uh, that would definitely think that you'll see commodities explode uh, through the roof. You know, it just makes sense uh, just in the empirical way of looking at how uh, you would have to allocate your assets just to be on the safe side. From a 50K standpoint, you can see we had a big run up there. Uh, it was on positive extremes beginning from right around the 52.93 area. So not much uh, in order to uh, fill that back in and that would be normalized and then be able to continue on its path. So it'd be easy to see from a reading standpoint intraday with the holiday and everything. You know, you just had a little bit of movement in the mornings, but uh, nothing particular special took place. So we start a new month, and again, new money is going to flow in, and it's got to go somewhere, and there aren't a whole lot of uh, locations for it to go, uh, simply with uh, rates not being uh, 
accurate to where the current uh, economy is. So uh, I think that that uh, then is going to be one of those back and forth where we're going to see again those Intraday plays are going to be mild, but then in post markets, you might see some bigger swings. And uh, I think, that, again, we talked about that before, that's going to be the options uh, uh, looking to decay some of that momentum built into uh, option play to reduce that uh, impact. So that's what we're looking forward to at the start of the month here. Indicators uh, will be going out to everyone, so be ready for it. As always, though, trade well. Uh, anything relevant, I'll put it on the Skype chat. Have a good one.